Hello everyone, we wanted to start a little uh, thing here. What, what, what we want to do is something quite simple. We want to be going to use this rocket to launch a communication satellite work. Now this rocket is not just a standard rocket, it's a rocket ran by an automated computer. And you see Magichap here, all nice, but Kerbo is here doing the ma main work. Now previous time I screwed up due to the warp engine not working just w right yet. Yeah, time warp, not really uh, a proper warp engine. But here we go. I'm all hands off. You see me doing nothing. Really doing nothing. It's doing its stuff here. So this Kerbo script thing here is doing its thing. The Magichap stats here are just for fun. Now this rocket can still use a lot of improvements and stuff, but at least it seems to be working. Now, um, you see that it's loading flight schedule, load secret commencing pre-launch checks, it's at a thousand kilometers, Grafton commencing at 40 kilometers, assumes launching from KSC as precondition, if not launching from KSC, continue at own risk, pre-launch leading countdown, and there it goes, there's the first stage gone now. And commencing countdown, countdown, ignition, lift off, and rocket has cleared the launch pad. When it has cleared the launch pad, it means it has ascended to at least 100 meters of it. And then it goes staging. And when it enters staging, it actually just stages as normal now. I'm going to show you some more info on this rocket here. You see some mods installed actually, I think quite clearly notice them. Mech jab, quite noticeable. Achievements here are being all about <laughs> crew member. I'm ashamed of what I did to how that happened, so um, I'm gonna tell you anyways. But okay, so here you see the loss for missions, so we can add an alarm for this mission, for instance, at a certain moment that it should be uh, having an alarm going, so we can at least uh, be done with our stuff. But I did not know if this alarm kill and uh, scuba script just is like, okay, you dropped, and I'm gonna pull you back up the warp. So, we are now hitting to f about 15. This rocket also regulates its speed to make sure it does not burn itself to a crisp. Which is also just per. Now, um, of course we do want to limit our velocity on this rocket. What I'm gonna be doing soon is actually quite simple. Once we have our comm network deployed, and this is just a little communication satellite, it's not worth much, it's a really crappy satellite. But it should be doing a quite fine job of providing some basic communications network capabilities in this early stage of the space program. And uh, yeah. So I'm testing the automated return of a capsule into the uh, atmosphere. But the first test ought to be uncrewed. And you can ask, you can get it's quite simple. But the thing is that currently if we stick a crew on board, it has a quite high risk of that. Because we are going to debug this code, of course, we can like control it, but I want to shut down all the communications during the final descent when it starts error breaking. And it should be deploying the parachute at a certain moment when it's actually at a place where it can safely deploy communications fully again. But that brings its problems, of course, but we just want to know if it does things properly. So, we are, of course, not going to be able to deploy our parachute. And that's one thing to consider, but we are going to be wanting to make our descent, so it is actually going to be saying we have a, soon a program which is able to toss a orbit. Then we can do our maneuvers just by ourselves, or with MacJab, whatever you wish. And then we can toss the rocket back to the surface. So what we're actually going to try to do is try to see if at the right moment it activates the right components. So it will give debug output soon on those components to make it work. Now let's enable its communication, you see the antenna sticking out and actually it's now pushing up its apps. Now once its apps is pushed up, you're next thing commencing in this uh, process. So it's a very important thing to do for this rocket to do what's up next. But yeah, so it's uh, gonna want to hit 1000 km altitude. It's now sticking at about 400 almost. But now 400. Burning at max burn, it's not really an accurate rocket. I do want to make something which is able to fine tune that orbit really precisely. We have also a 
just a bit but also one for very big precision i also make a specific program for keo launches so we can eventually just toss the rocket exactly at the right spot into keo orbit and what happens we can actually uh yeah Oh, yeah, it did the warping again wrong, and we are tossing back down in the atmosphere, you see? It's now saying, okay, uh, we are in trouble. Warp engine is not really working as intended just yet. Yeah, you see the rocket blew up. <laughs> okay. Now, of course, with that, I can give you a short look at the code I use for doing this, so uh, how it works internally by bringing this thing to orbit. We're just going to remove the warping engine and do the warping just manually once again. So, um... Yeah, because over warps really warp. So um, proceed. I'm gonna say um, copy launch from archive. Yeah, edit launch. Yes, go for that. So we want to be going and diving into this. Well, you see a lot of preconditions stuff. Then it goes to countdown, and then it goes into its state machine, which actually uh, makes sure that it is going to do its things right now. If uh, this is going to... Here you see, yeah, there's going to be wanting to uh, do this war procedure. Now, we're going to command that part out there, just there. Command all these things out here. Now, why do we want to do this? Um, well, this one I don't want to get away rid of, but at least we have the other. Okay, save. And we go exit, and then we copy it back to the archive, so at least have it fixed for now. Well, fix is actually just tossed away a faulty piece of the software. At least we can go for another launch. Go and take it into orbit. Here we go. Now, usually you are going to be able uh, to use this method when you got it refined enough that it will automate most of your common rocket uh, stuff. For the uncut, you can still use MacJab or a separate program, but this is actually meant for um, the sort of normal rocket staging methods. It's not suitable for the staging. I tested it, it's not suitable for it just yet. But this actually, it's a state machine which is quite much like. Uh, yeah. So, um, I can make this state machine work in a way that it can say, okay, you're now in a Spargo stage, so we can be quite sure now it's state. It's not all that hard to make it work with both methods, but I want to make. Uh, set launch will eventually go be uh, orbit launch and it will be a, a Spargus orb uh, procedure which will be somewhat similar to this but actually be almost doing the same things along this line. Now of course AG2 and AG1 are the ones handling the communications uh, systems for this it's going into orbit so uh, but for now we're tossing quite well into orbit and for it's also proceeding uh, very well in the so, uh, this will just be normal. We'll fast forward for you so don't, you don't have to watch all of this. Now, welcome back here. Now, we are not going to coast this to our circularization burn. So, if we have 22 minutes. So, um, yeah, and this uh, we're trying to knock a location in its orbit. And uh, for the now coasting to the circularization burn, which is not far away anymore. There we go. It turns tilts itself right. There we go. And it's doing for that launch procedure for this final burn very soon, which will be just a fairly short burn actually. So. Um, It's uh, going to burn in one minute time. But by doing this launch and fully automating them, you could be some coffee or grabbing a drink or whatever. In the meantime, grab your cold one or whatever. Just uh, these things. Eventually, you can expand it to fully automated space vehicles, which commit a mission fully automated, which would be very awesome to do. <laughs> But this is what I learned after tinkering with these things for about three hours time. No knowledge about this stuff at all. Just watched this early first YouTube video and now I can make this. It stabilizes itself and understands. Yeah, it's really some useful stuff. So 
I love the way how it enables you to focus on more productive things like just making good rockets and you can just build a universal program. This is state machine. So it just looks, okay, what is my situation? Uh, acts upon that. So it just constantly checks that, constantly looping through it all of the time. Now we are going to make our circularization burner any now. So coasting to circularization still, it's going to be making it right now. Circularization burn. It's commencing it. And it's pushing its periods now. We are now hitting a bit. You see, view changing. We are now it, and we are about to uh, knock it properly. So here we go. It's not precise. I do want to make a fine tune. Oh, there we go. Oh, the rocket is bouncing into the probe itself. That's not good. It should actually let the engine down, which is this is really bad. It's pushing it really far out the app webs because pushing into this rocket, and we cannot stop it. <laughs> Anyways. That was something I had fixed earlier, but it seems it needs some new debug uh, things. At least I want to thank you for watching. And uh, about Jeb, uh, yeah, we had a little mission to the moon, or to Minmus, to grab some samples. He tried badass like he usually is, and wanted to go use his jetpack for entering uh, Minmus. Yeah, this is really some bad situation here. <laughs> anyway, it's so, and. Uh, he uh, wanted to be a badass and jump down to the surface with the jetpack. He managed to touch the surface while trying to get back to the capsule. He failed, he overshot it, uh, dropped back to the surface and made a severe case of lethal breaking which caused uh, fatal wounds on him. Anyways, thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time around. Thanks.